welcome back to another video about divided by and this time we're going to have a look at how to divide by six now by now you'll have noticed a bit of a pattern one of the first things i will say to you um, about any of these strategies tricks tips or otherwise is to learn the basic facts the reason for that is uh, it makes everything so much easier now for many of the other divided bys, um, there are tricks to make it easy. When we're dividing by 5, for example, you could double it and then divide by 10. Um, with divided by 6, there's no easy, simple trick to get you out of trouble. So, the best thing, the simplest thing actually, is actually just learning the numbers. Um, so, let's go through. Uh, again, you could skip count in 6s. Um, so we could start that as our, our uh, give that as our starting point. So we go 6, 12, now you've got me stretching my uh, thinking, 18, after 18, 24, hopefully there's enough room on here to do all of them, uh, then 30, 36, 42, one of my favourites there, I love that one, 48, Another class favourite. Uh, just give ourselves a wee bit more room. Then 54. Then 60. And have I missed one? I feel like I've missed one. 66. Let's double check, make sure I've got them all. 6, 12. 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60, 66, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, I have. I've got one more to go. That was 11. And then the last one, of course, is 72. Ah, Mr. M. See, even teachers make mistakes. It's all right. It's all part of the learning. Now, In a way, we've got our answer. So we've skipped, skip counted 12 times up to 72. Um, now we just fill in our answers. So we say, well, divided by 6 equals 1, divided by 6 equals 2. Same sort of pattern that you may have seen before, divided by 6 equals 3. We'll just fast forward this bit. So, here's our basic facts all laid out. So, 6 divided by 6 is 1, 12 divided by 6 is 2, 18 divided by 6 is 3, and so on. You can see them all there. The best way to learn these is just to repeat them and repeat them and repeat them. Some of them are easy, and you don't need to keep repeating them. So, I would focus on 18 divided by 6 is 3. You know this from your 5 times table, 36 divided by 6, this is the only one that's unique to the 6 times table, so 36 divided by 6 is 6, that's what you call uh, the square root as well, so 6 times 6 is 36 is the square, um, 6 is the square root of 36. This one I love, now this will help you in your 7 times table as well, so do learn that one. Uh, learn. 6 times 8 is 48. Now, in our class, we make that into a little tune. 6 times 8 is 48. 6 times 8 is 48. That's a good little chant, and it helps you remember that. And tell you, the kids, even from years and years ago, still remember that basic fact from that little chant. This one here is lovely. 54 divided by 6 is 9. Do remember that one. You probably don't need to focus on this one. It's in the 10 times table, 60. This one, easy. 66 divided by 6 is 11. And then 72 divided by 6 is 12. This one is worth remembering. 
Um, you can work it out, but it leaves you then with only half of them that you really need to focus on. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 36 divided by 6 is 6. 42 divided by 6 is 7. 48 divided by 6 is 8. 54 divided by 6 is 9. You can tell that's in the 9 times table because 5 and 4 add up to 9. And then 72 divided by 6 is 12. The rest are so easy you don't need to worry about them. This one here, you may need to work on a little bit, but it happens all the time. It's a very common number. So divide, 24 divided by 6 is 4 is probably one you've encountered many times. Um, and so that only leaves you with a few. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, half of them. Half of them that you need to memorize. And if you can deal with those, you are set. And I'd strongly recommend that you practice and practice and practice. Don't spend a whole day on it if you need to, because it's well worth it knowing your six times table. Now, um, I don't have any other tricks for you, but I would say if you do get stuck, you can use your ruler, uh, your meter ruler, and it works in the same way as we showed you in the five times uh, divided by five video. You can do it, but it is a little bit tricky counting back down sixes, and the numbers aren't as clearly marked. So you can do it, but you really need to know the numbers pretty well anyway. So by the time you've done that, you might as well have just learnt your basic facts. But for example, uh, say I wanted to do 72, 72 divided by 6, I could count back in sixes. So 72, so 1 from 72 to 66, 1. Two, three takes a lot more thinking. Four, five, six, uh, oh, yeah, six, seven, eight, and then nine, uh, ten, eleven, twelve. So it works, it works fine, but it's actually harder to do it with this than it is just to learn your basic facts. And I know that's hard news for some of you because memory stuff is hard, but with the effort, I guarantee you. Now, what do we do if we want to divide any number by six? I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so here we are about to divide any number by six. Well, not as hard as it seems. Now you've encountered this kind of division thing before. Uh, we've done it with the twos and the fives, uh, possibly four times table. You might have seen that one already too. So um, it's exactly the same, except in this case, we're going to see how many times six fits into each of those numbers. Our remainders are going to be either one, two, three, four, or five. Um, the decimals for them are a little bit trickier, so I won't list all of those now, but we'll encounter those as we come to them in the next part of it. But for right now, we'll just deal with numbers that are easily divisible by 6. So, same sort of process. How many times does 6 fit into 9? Only once. And then there's 3 left over. 6 fits neatly into 36. You'll remember 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times so 96 divided by 6 is 16. Pretty easy, right? So, um, it's more, this strategy is useful for numbers that get a bit large too. So let's try the next one. Say we had something a bit crunchier, like 168 divided by 6. So, pause there, have a go for yourself, and see you come up with the same sort of answer that I do. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to have a go. Six does not fit into one at all. I can put a zero, I could put a ghost zero, I could just put nothing at all. We've eliminated that though, I'm going to put it across into the tens column and just, that's why it kind of is little there, it's kind of squashed into the tens, so I'm thinking about sixteen tens. So how many times does six fit into sixteen? Well, it's not quite 18, that would be convenient, but no, it uh, fits in only twice because 6 times 2 is 12, and I have 4 left over. Then, I can say, well, how many times 6 into 48? Oh, it's the little, it's the one with the chance, isn't it? The little 6 times 8 is 48, 6 times 8, ah, so it must be 
eight times. So 168 chopped into six parts. Each of those parts has 28 in it. Ooh, looks like we're starting to get the hang of this. All right, now time for you to have a go. I'll give you a, well, it's not a mean one. It's not a mean one, let's be honest, but see how you go with it. You've got 700 and 38 and chop that into six. How many of the, how many of those six parts going to have in them? Okay, hopefully you've had a bit of a go. Six fits into seven just once with one left over. Six fits into thirteen. Six times two is twelve, but I've got one left over. Then six fits neatly into eighteen three times. So if your answer was 123, you are getting the hang of it. What about trickier numbers where it is not divisible by three? Hmm. Well, let's see. Um, what would happen if we had... Hmm, a bigger number, 965. I'm going to chop that into six straight away. We know it's not going to fit. It's not in the six times table. It is in the five times table, but that's not going to help us in this case. We can use exactly the same process, but we may have to add on some extra zeros there to help us figure out what the decimal is. Six fits into nine just once with three left over. Does fit neatly into 36 six times, but it doesn't fit into five. So what do we do here? Uh, I've got to do something. Well, I would suggest this. Give yourself a bit of space. Six fits into five no times, but don't forget to put a decimal there. Then I've got 50, 50 tenths in this case. So, 6 fits into 50. 48 is the closest. 6 times 8 is 48, with 2 left over. 6 fits into 23 is the closest. 3 times 6 is 18, so 3 there. I've still got some left over. Now I think what you'll see here is we're going to end up with one of those repeating patterns. 6 fits into 20, 3 times with 2 left over, 3 times with 2 left over, and so on and so on and so on. So my answer would be 160.8333. And when it carries on like that, we call it recurring. It's, you, it's a word you might have heard. Um, sometimes they indicate it with a little R, but I don't like to do that because it can be confused with remainder, R for remainder, or R for radius even. So I tend to just do this ellipsis which indicates that it goes on and on and on. All right. What about numbers that are already decimals? Again, as we've proven with other times that we've done this, it doesn't really matter. We can get uh, an answer. It doesn't matter too much. So we had um, 74.5. Two, three, and we want to divide that by six. I can't think of a story about why you would need to do that. <laughs> Most likely thing is it's going to be a maths test. Um, that's okay. Sometimes we just need to do maths for the sake of the problem solving. And that's what I love about these is that you're presented with this problem, but you can break it down into little chunks and you can solve it almost immediately just by using the same method over and over again. Six into seven goes once, one left over. Six into 14, the closest is six times two is 12, with two left over. Make sure my decimal goes there. It's really important that I don't forget that. Six into 22, oh, not quite 24. I have to go down to 18, which is three times. Then I've got uh, four left over. 6 into 43, oh so close, 42 would have been 7 times, so I can put 7 but I've got 1 left over, I have to put a 0. 
6 into 10 goes once with 4 left over. 6 into 40, 36 goes uh, 6 times with 4 left over. And you can see here this is going to be one of those repeating patterns again. You can have 4 or 4 and I've run out of space on my screen there. But it's just going to carry on and on and on. Hence the ellipsis. So 74.23 would give you... <coughs> If you chopped them into six segments, 12.371666666 recurring. So that is a handy dandy method that works for any number at all. And it's just lovely. And I hope you get to enjoy dividing by six or any other number. Because once you've got the method, once you've figured out how to do that algorithm, you can divide any number. And it's quite, it's, quite, it's liberating. It's fun. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another video another time. Bye.